Hey there. Those who know me, uh, some of you, um, know that uh, I normally don't appear on camera. I'm always on the back. And uh, you also know that at this point that, uh, or you can notice right now actually, that the English is not my first language. But uh, I've been married for 15 years to an American and my children are also American, so I better <laughs> use the language also as a, as a not only as a family communication tool, but also as a, as a way to communicate with you all. And uh, well, this is a video about the turn about uh, math uh, and uh, human organization. So we have on one side, um, let's say the platonic uh, exactitude of math, the cold uh, reason of math. And on the other hand, we have the messy uh, way of uh, humans organizing themselves and living in society. Uh, well, well, this topic, this intersection is quite interesting, but uh, <laughs> we, we may need uh, actually quite a framework. We may build something that uh, actually gets us some sort of uh, set and setting, some context. Uh, frames are, can be beautiful like this one. You can actually create a picture, you know, this Greco we have here now. The model wasn't that good, as good as the painter, but uh, it's important to have a set. Uh, it's important to, to know uh, that uh, any uh, sort of uh, uh, set of ideas we present have to be anchored into a context and that uh, we if we are not able to set up this context it can get difficult can get sometimes boring and uh, so fractals and uh, urbanism why uh, well um, let's say we may think uh, about nature in general or the universe as a pretty not only <laughs> big place but it's also empty uh, there are big concepts there are such as that are kind of like scary right such as let's say entropy uh, this tendency to disorder uh, disintegration uh, separation you know, the, the, the universe is expanding oh uh, or chaos right there is a chaos theory uh, involving complex systems we are a complex system within a complex system within a complex system <laughs> and uh, it's apparently chaotic but from this chaos actually and from this entropy there's something that emerges that is beautiful. And uh, math is also the emergence of order uh, that, uh, that is exact and that can be beautifully, if we get to understand the concepts, it, it can be also beautiful. So let's say that uh, despite the fact that math can be exact, and uh, reality feels messy. There are patterns there that both worlds, the platonic, the exact world, the ideal world of math and the real world may share. Urbanism is our way of organizing ourselves since the beginning of our species. Um, also Aristotle, for example, in the classic period, um, well, he just told us, well, you know, uh, man is um, actually a political animal and he was using the word political, not in the, in the current sense, but uh, the, 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 the sense back then was a person of the police. 
the police were the city states in uh, in Greece, the the land of the Achaeans. So we are political. We are citizens. Uh, we are uh, animals that are very special. We 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 create social bonds and we build structures to. Uh, to gather ourselves that become neighborhoods, that become towns, that become um, bigger territories. And uh, why fractals may interest us? Uh, well, let me, in order to sort of connect these two worlds in a sort of tangential way, um, the other day there was a person I follow on, on, on social network, uh, sharing actually a, a microscopic picture of the inside, uh, the interior of a human cell, and that was the picture, the, 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 that was the most detailed picture, picture we have until the moment of one of our cells. And why he shared this picture or he was saying well you know uh, I kind of look at this picture and uh, it does look you know in, in this disorder in all these little things you find in here I kind of like recognize the mitochondrion this sort of bacteria that got kind of like pulled in instead of a more complex system to create energy for the let's say the eukaryotic cell this more complex cell that composes us. So I can recognize this part, uh, but this other part, of it looks like an abstract picture, right? But it also looks, if you just kind of like get a peek inside one of our cells, it's like you are just zooming out and looking at the world uh, uh, from, from, from space. And you see this very complex human civilization using the surface of the earth. So um, there is, we have the feeling that there is this in nature, within nature, we have this sort of set of uh, beautiful dance between entropy and chaos and order, self-organization and all these forces that kind of like create beauty that when we look at them, it says, that makes sense actually. Uh, I would argue that some, some of the abstract art I like is uh, sometimes uh, you know because I have a react in a not very rational way but it makes sense to me because it may just make me feel I'm looking at patterns and I sort of sense there are some patterns there I may be relating to so a lot of systems within nature get this reaction from us because actually we are using the same sort of uh, forces, systems, uh, complex systems, to sort of organize, to sort of create some sort of order out of the chaos, the potential entropy, the disorder. So that's urbanism. <laughs> that's why urbanism is beautiful. And there is uh, one type of urbanism I would like to think about today. It's not the central planning. It's more the bottom up sort of urbanism. Let's say, let's imagine, for example, the research of a mathematician, American mathematician called Ron English. He uh, actually have a TED talk at the, put the link so you guys can, can look at that interesting uh, speech. And he actually, he studied the, some villages in the Sahel, which is this territory in the Sahara. And why um, these villages in the Sahel and this whole area in Africa are interested? Well, uh, looking from the very smaller, from the smallest part of these towns all the way to the, to the shape of them, there is sort of a continuum. It's, it's, it's the same shape that looks the same at uh, every scale. So the object uh, chambers of a house looks the same as the object town. So that's the way a fractal works. 
these villages, when they uh, self-assemble, they uh, actually are shaped in such a way that uh, make uh, easy, let's say, the protection of the village. They also may be efficient construction-wise. They also may protect from the strong, let's say, dust storms from the area. They are easily to re they are easy to repair and uh, easy to replicate. And actually, they uh, sort of resemble uh, patterns found in nature. So if you lose track to with the sort of system grid where you were trying to sort of uh, replicate, you can also you can always go back to the original models to the fractals you find in nature. So uh, this sort of connection that brings us to the let's say the way we may have begun build, building complex societies uh, tells us that uh, there is a reason why we find very attractive let's say the image macro, uh, the, 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 the augmented image of the interior of one of our cells uh, we look at it and they say well it looks kind of messy but makes sense the same way it makes sense to me a very nice abstract painting. It's abstract, but at the same time, I mean, have you? I mean, it makes me aware there is something there that makes me think on on, on a pattern. And this sort of uh, sixth sense of what we are looking, this sort of awareness, emergence of a sense out of a apparent disorder, is actually a celebration of let's say. Uh, the capacity of nature of uh, uh, not only reparation but also uh, the ability to sort of make complexity and order out of uh, disorder uh, and uh, disgregation and uh, chaos. So um, urbanism in a way is our probably humble enough uh, will to sort of transcend in space and say hey this is our ideal to live uh, with each other and uh, it makes sense to us because it's useful and because it has a shape uh, that makes sense to us and uh, looking at nature you sort of uh, when you see a leaf for example from a tree uh, you kind of like say well you know it's been to 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 get to this level of engineering it's been a, a long process of trial and error from for, for millions of years to to get to to to, to this model we cannot aspire to that, but uh, having math, which is the ideal of, let's say, this will to self-organization, we also have uh, this key, if we, want to, if we want to call it like that, to sort of improve and learn better ways to sort of celebrate these patterns. So fractals can be, if we are thinking about these objects that are the same, a microscopic and microscopic level from the smallest to the biggest if we're thinking about applying this model from nature into um, our human models we may be interested also in, in, in thinking about what's the consequences of that is that mm, let's say a way of uh, going backwards or it could be like a futuristic, um, let's say, improvement of the situation now. It's both things. could be also a, a response to some of the challenges in the future, in this world and maybe soon in other worlds. Uh, why? Well, let's, uh, for example, if we just go if we go to another discipline that is more subjective, it's our way to looking into things, not the things themselves. Sometimes 
philosophy go back to the 19th century, one of the critics of the, let's say, important uh, philosophical branch of the moment, which was German idealism, Hegel, was another German philosopher, philosopher way less popular at the times, uh, Arthur Schopenhauer. Schopenhauer uh, thought of nature as, uh, let's say, a system where, a complex system where there was a will to live, there was a race to sort of um, a pulsion to live, uh, uh, to, 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 to improve, to, 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 to get more co more complex, to sort of uh, reproduce, to... It was a, it's a, almost like a pre-Darwinian Beatleism, right? And uh, actually Schopenhauer was pretty interested in the implications of uh, this phenomena and he didn't even apply it or think about it, think thought of it as as uh, something related to living things. He also was thinking about um, objects because, for example, there is this rock that, as it evolves, <laughs> creates these sort of crystals that are fractals. The snow, when it falls. You know, and it's mm, diminished scale. It's also a set of fractals. And uh, actually, Schopenhauer would have been interested in uh, uh, taking a peek into, let's say, the way molecules, very simple molecules, turn into very complex molecules. These comp complex molecules uh, sort of are a step behind another improvement of this assembly, which is uh, proteins. If there were no proteins in the universe, there would be something very similar because it's a very efficient way to sort of stack things together, bond things together in a very, uh, to, to, to store things like uh, information. And proteins is actually, this, the next step could be RNA and then DNA. So this sort of um, set of steps of complexity towards something that is more, 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 uh, more alive was a thought that interested greatly uh, Schopenhauer and other people from the 19th century on. And uh, we can thought about self uh, assembly or uh, out auto organization in nature as some sort of um, very uh, interested present nature has given to us. Uh, we have to keep studying because as we know more of the way uh, uh, fractals can work, our maybe towns uh, and uh, cities could improve. Uh, there are also some papers out there, out there just sort of making the point that if you look into uh, cities nowadays, they are not far beyond fractals. Uh, they are not far away from them actually. They are sort of irregular fractals, but uh, if you just take a very complex model of things we can measure from a city, from digital data all the way to how people maybe uh, using basic things and um, buildings, roads. And uh, if, you, uh, if you take this model and you take out considerations of central planning from let's say Roman times all the way, or even for, mm, before Romans and all the way to, to now, if you take implications of central planning that that may have not been related to sort of a, um, a well of state self uh, organization, you may find some fl may find some flaws that uh, some uh, sort of uh, back and forth that resembles. Uh, 
for example, the, the, the way our heart is pumping oxygen into uh, our blood uh, or the way our lungs work. Uh, by the way, all the arteria in the lungs in the lungs are actual fractals. So <laughs> we are thinking uh, about the same sort of uh, setting. And uh, this is pretty much um, a little exploration into this sort of world of uh, intersection of uh, fractals, math, and uh, uh, urbanism. So on one side we have the ideal, the exactitude, the model, uh, math, and then the other we have the messiness, the way we sort of try to make sense, try to create order out of the disorder. And this is something we sort of do via test and error sometimes, by a customary behavior also. So there are things we can learn, things we can improve, relearn. Um, stuff that doesn't work anymore we can ditch we can just bring bring in new models so this is just uh, uh, let's think about it as some first uh, comment on the topic uh, let's let's see what you have to say about it and uh, I would like to just thank you for the attention and also will be just uh, doing a version in Spanish of this same video. The reason why there is this version in English is that actually I was talking to, to Kirsten and, and she told me, um, why not in English too? Uh, in the end, it's a communication uh, tool we use in the family and uh, why not using it with you as long as it works for you. Uh, the, the original intention was to, to, to do as the only Spanish version of the text, but it's also an opportunity if any of you is interested in just taking a look at the same um, sort of set of ideas. I'm, I'm not talking, I'm not reading to you, so the other video is not exact. I'm not saying the exact same words in Spanish, but it's sort of the same conversation the same topics being discussed in Spanish. If you want to take a look at that video, I'll put the link that for you too. The, we'll do cross-linking in both videos and there is also an article we are really going to be linking to. And uh, well, this was the, the first video, hopefully not the, not the last one. If you guys are interested, uh, welcome to things, uh, we'll keep keep talking about topics that uh, can be interesting. Uh, the idea is to do some thought-provoking stuff, uh, more than clickbaity things. So uh, hopefully that works for you. Um, it was a pleasure. So see you next time. Thanks.